grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text was John's uh, telling of the triumphal entry of Palm Sunday. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it just feels, normally when I come to Palm Sunday, I usually say this, it's been a long Lent. But it feels like the shortest Lent of my life. It's still the same amount of days. I don't know what's going on here, but I thought Ash Wednesday was last week. But we are here already. The Holy Week is upon us. And in his text, we see that Jesus has a parade, as it were. And it's kind of a bit out of place for Jesus. It's very public. It's very showy, actually. So why this parade? Why the triumphal entry? Well, the simple answer is, the text that we read to you by, in our Old Testament reading needs to be fulfilled, and Jesus has now fulfilled it. This is what the Messiah would do, and he did it. If they were reading their Bibles, they would have saw this. They prophesied that the Messiah, the king, would do such a thing, and the people would be excited for their savior and their king. So really, at this point, I'm aware that I can literally say at this point, Jesus did this to fulfill the Old Testament, amen, and sit down. Okay? And I thought about it. And then I called the elders, and they threatened to fire me if I did that. So we'll continue on, because there's lots going on, actually, in this text. It's a beautiful text. It's a beautiful event, in fact. Everyone was so happy in this parade. They were happy because they were thinking maybe the Roman rule would end. Or maybe this will be the king that we've been wanting and the world would now fear us. Even today, Christians think that they're waiting for Jesus to come down and take control of our society and our world and make everything right. We just are waiting for it. And those who doubt him would know the truth and it'd all be easy and simple and direct. And Jesus just does not do easy well. And he's not asking you to have an easy life either. But how useful it would have been if this would have happened. If Jesus would have fulfilled all the requirements that the world had put upon him. Now, I have a Jeep. And because I have a Jeep, you need to know, well, I'll back up maybe. I'm an evangelist. I love telling people about Jesus. But one of the byproducts of becoming very good at being an evangelist, or very comfortable with being an evangelist at least, is that I like to tell people about everything I like. <laughs> and my family knows there are certain subjects you should not bring up with me in the room or I will go on and on and on. And Jesus is one of them, by the way. They like that one, but have I been told by my family enough? Yes. But my Jeep is another area. And so my Jeep is something I like. You can get me talking on it. And uh, it's a beautiful vehicle, in my opinion, at least. It is the tires are the perfect size. The suspension is just right. Every part on it I have touched and loved and I care for. And when it's muddy, it looks even better than when it's clean. It's perfect in every way. And yet, a few weeks ago, a part broke down and I had to rip into that engine to get it out and to replace the part and put it in. And I did just that. And after I did all the work, I turned over the key, and I will shorten the story and just say, it didn't work for a week and a half. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was everything it was before, but once it stopped working, it became, quite frankly, useless and stress-inducing, in fact. I needed this vehicle to drive to work. Now, I'm not suggesting that Jesus on Palm Sunday is useless. That's not my suggestion. Only that this is that if Jesus would have stopped right here, if he'd have stopped and gone into the temple and sit on the throne and been the God or the, the king that everyone wanted him to be, he would have not fulfilled why he came to Jerusalem. He would have been pretty. It would have been nice. It would have been impressive. It wouldn't have been our Savior. And we need a Savior so bad. 
That's what we need. We don't need a king like the earthly kings. We don't need to be proven right in this world. We don't need any of that stuff. We need to be saved. And once we are saved, our Lord tells us to go out, love our neighbor. Come and see what our Lord has done. So, Jesus did not sit still. He kept going. And he did his work publicly in Jerusalem. And you will know the story that's coming. He will die for our sins. And he will resurrect. And on Easter Sunday, just like every Sunday, including this one, we celebrate the empty tomb. The context of Jesus' actions are kind of important here. He had just recently, and John makes his connection, raised Lazarus from the dead. People saw this. This was no longer a quiet miracle. It was a bold miracle, not hidden. And everybody was talking about it. And so when the parade happened, they were all like, hey, I want to see the guy who rose a man from the dead who'd been in a grave for three days. That makes sense. There's no hiding it anymore with Jesus. No more hiding. The, hi the parade is in public. The, the cross will be in public. The empty tomb is public. No more hiding the words of Jesus. He goes forward today to publicly do the hard thing that we need him to do. It's actually the hardest thing anyone has ever done. There's a hike in Brunei called the Snowman Trek. It's 217 miles. It takes 25 to 30 days. You peak out at 16,100 feet. Uh, there's only a small window of opportunity because the winter will come and close up the trail. It is, the one of the most, it is considered the most painful hike in the world. Why would anyone do this? They all say the same thing that people have done it. The view. And you might be thinking, who cares about the view? Or we can get a little closer to home if you don't want to go to Brunei. I can uh, tell you there's a hike in the Catskills called the, uh, I love this, the Devil's Path. It got my attention, you can imagine. It's only a two to three day hike and you only want to hike 25 miles, which is a pretty easy hike all said and done. But you'll go up and down 8,000 feet in total, up and down, up and down. It's very painful. So why would you do it? The answer is the same, the view. Now, you might be thinking, I don't know, I wouldn't put myself through that kind of misery for a view. You haven't seen it. You don't know how good it is. It might be spectacular, and it might even be worth it if your eyes would see it. Because most people, when you get to the top of a mountain and they have a beautiful view, they all say the same thing, worth it. Our Lord Jesus is coming to Jerusalem to get to a view himself, a view on top of a cross. It's his Everest, as it were, and he will get to that top, and there'll be suffering, and there'll be pain, and there'll even be his death. But in the pain, suffering, and agony, there will be beauty. There he will see out, and he will look at not only those people who are watching him, but all of humanity that ever has and ever will live. And he will look and he will see what he's doing. And just like that hiker with that beautiful view, he's going to say, it's worth it. You're worth it. We're worth it. Humanity's worth it. It's finished. The problem is done with. It's been dealt with on the cross. That's the view our Lord has on his cross. And the view changes. What a beautiful view it must have been to walk out of that tomb. That would be beautiful, wouldn't it? I wonder today what would bring a whole town, a whole crowd, a whole community out for a parade like that. I could list famous people, but I wouldn't go out to see them if I was, I just wouldn't do it. And I'm sure there are people that I could list that I would think, well, that might be worthy of going out, but the young kids would be like, I don't even know who that person is. And if I know young children and I've talked to them, they can list people that I don't even know who they are anymore. I'm, 
just getting old, I guess. I mean, and so they showed up the town. I wouldn't even care either. But if there was a man that went down to the graveyard in front of everybody and raised someone we love from the grave after the three days of being in the grave, yeah, we're going to that parade. Yeah, we're telling everybody about it. Yeah, we recognize that we are now in the presence of the divine. Jesus, in fact, did that. And even did more than that, he walked out of his own grave. And that, the world is still coming and seeing. Who is Jesus? Come and see. Come and see the man who died for your sins. Come and see the man who raised the dead. Come and see a man who rose from the dead. Come and see a man who says to you, God loves you. Amen. The peace of God who passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.